Does he have a gun? The planes are everywhere. Is he dead? I don't know. He's making weird sounds. Okay, who is this man? I don't, I don't know who he is. In the small town of Springfield, Illinois, Donna and Mark Winger were a seemingly happy couple, but dark secrets lurked beneath their perfect facade. On the fateful day of August 29, 1995, tragedy struck when Donna was found brutally murdered in her own home. At first, it appeared to be a random act of violence, but as the investigation progressed, suspicions grew around her husband Mark. Despite this, he emerged as a hero of the community, standing by his wife and defending her memory. However, it would take six years for the truth to come to light, unraveling years of dark secrets and hidden motives, and a husband who managed to escape justice. Welcome to the Detective-verse, where we travel into the universe of solved and unsolved crimes and mysteries from all corners of the galaxy. Join us as we delve into this twisted tale of a beloved mother who was robbed of her life. We'll explore how her husband's plot to frame an innocent man fooled everyone, including Donna's family, and the clues in the initial investigation that were missed that could have changed everything. Born on November 10, 1963, in the sunny state of Florida, Donna Ellen Brown was the oldest of three daughters. Her family and friends admired her for her kindness, love, and beauty. She was steadily climbing the ladder of success as an operating room technician. In 1989, at the age of 26, Donna married Mark Winger, who was a nuclear engineer. Their wedding took place in a traditional Jewish ceremony, since they were both Jewish. Soon after, Mark secured a job in Springfield, which prompted the couple to relocate. Donna also found success in Springfield and landed a job at Memorial Hospital. Donna and Mark radiated happiness, appearing as the epitome of a perfect couple. Their lives were blessed with success, and their cozy residence was nestled in a delightful neighborhood. However, their yearning for a child left them shattered when they discovered Donna's inability to conceive. Destiny, though, had a surprising turn in store. In the very hospital where Donna worked, a young teenager brought a beautiful baby girl into the world in 1995. How do you feel, Donna? I'm overwhelmed. And I just want her to know that it just so happens that the day she's coming home to us is the anniversary of our engagement of Mark and I. In June 1995, they officially welcomed Bailey Elizabeth Winger into their home. In the sultry August of 1995, 31-year-old Donna and little Bailey paid a visit to her family in Florida. Their visit was nothing short of joyful, but all good things must come to an end. Tearful goodbyes were exchanged between Donna's parents and their beloved granddaughter as they watched them board the plane back to St. Louis, which was a mere two-hour drive away from their home in Springfield. Because she was with her baby daughter, Donna opted to hire a shuttle driver to ensure their safe passage from the airport to Springfield. Little did she know that this fateful journey would turn into a bone-chilling ordeal. The driver appointed by the shuttle service, Roger Harrington, seemed like any other employee on the surface. However, as the miles passed, his conversation grew odd and unsettling. He spoke of bizarre things, revealing a struggle with multiple personalities and disturbing voices that urged him towards violence. He started flirting with Donna and engaged in conversations about drugs and sexual activities. The once calm and steady ride became a nerve-wracking experience as Roger's driving became erratic, leaving Donna shaken and alarmed. Despite the unnerving journey, Donna arrived home safely, but the encounter left her with a sense of unease. After all, Roger knew where she lived. Donna wasted no time in sharing her experience with her husband and family. Mark, filled with anger, lodged a formal complaint with the transportation company. The complaint worked, and Roger was suspended from the company. The haunting encounters were far from over, though. In the days that followed, Donna found herself on the receiving end of disturbing phone calls from an unidentified caller. Mark suspected that the perpetrator was none other than Roger Harrington himself. Donna's fear escalated, casting a dark shadow over her daily life. On August 29, 1995, Mark Winger's frantic voice pierced through the emergency line. Emergency! Emergency! This man just beat my wife! I shot him! Please help me! He was killing my wife! 
he reported that an intruder had attacked his wife. In an act of self-defense, Mark fired a fatal shot at the assailant and ended up killing him. The police responded to the scene and discovered Donna. She was lifeless and drenched in blood, with a hammer lying nearby. Close to her lay a man bearing two gunshot wounds to the head. His pulse was faintly lingering. He was rushed to the hospital, where he was eventually pronounced dead. Mark Winger's recollection of the tragic day unfolded as a haunting sequence of events. In the midst of his own exercise routine downstairs, an unfamiliar sound echoed through the house. He went upstairs to check what was going on. As he reached the bedroom, he noticed little Bailey lying alone on the master bed. But where was Donna? Gripped by a surge of concern, Mark went to check the dining room area. There, he was confronted by an intruder, an unknown man, brutally attacking his wife with a hammer. Driven by instinct, fear, and a desperate need to protect his wife, Mark took action. He aimed his weapon at the assailant and struck the man in the head. To his horror, the man continued to emit sounds. Then he fired another shot, bringing an end to the man's life. It wasn't until the arrival of the police that Mark learned the identity of the man he had shot. It was 27-year-old Roger Harrington. Upon investigating the scene, the police discovered compelling evidence that shed light on the events. Among the discoveries was a hammer which bore the fingerprints of the Winger family. Mark revealed that Donna had retrieved the hammer earlier that day, intending to remind him about hanging some pictures. Additionally, a gun was found on the table alongside a pack of cigarettes and a coffee cup belonging to Roger Harrington. His car was also parked in front of the house. The crime scene itself painted a vivid and distressing picture of the violent struggle that ensued between Roger and Donna. The cause of Donna's death was due to multiple traumatic injuries sustained from the hammer. The police, well acquainted with Roger Harrington's troubled past, marked by a proclivity for violence and mental illness, recognized him as a familiar figure. The crime scene seemed to align with Mark Winger's detailed account of the events that transpired on that day. Within a mere 48 hours, the case was swiftly closed. Roger was deemed the primary perpetrator while Mark was cleared of any wrongdoing. Donna's family, who stood by Mark's side, wholeheartedly supported this conclusion, believing that he had acted in defense of his beloved wife. The grief caused by Donna's tragic death weighed heavily on her shattered family. United in their pain, they rallied around Mark, offering support to both him and little Bailey. But as the family lived in Florida, they could not directly assist the now single father. In their efforts to ease Mark's burden and ensure Bailey's well-being, they proposed the idea of hiring a nanny. Reluctantly, Mark agreed, and Rebecca Simic joined their lives. Although it was bittersweet to witness another woman caring for Bailey, the family found solace in knowing that Rebecca genuinely cared for both the child and Mark. Eventually, feelings between Mark and Rebecca blossomed, leading to an unexpected romance. Rebecca discovered she was pregnant in 1996, swiftly followed by a spontaneous elopement between the two. They decided to sell the house that had once been shared by Mark and Donna, opting for a fresh start in the tranquil countryside. Meanwhile, in 1996, investigators recalled a bizarre incident involving Mark Winger's visit to the police station, seeking the return of his gun. Detective Charlie Cox remembered the encounter and admitted a nagging unease about the situation. However, given the closure of the case and the perception of Mark as a local hero, the detective's concerns were overshadowed and the matter was dismissed. After their marriage, Rebecca embraced her role as a mother to Bailey and officially adopted her. The bond between Rebecca and Mark grew stronger as they welcomed two more daughters and a son into their expanding family. Rebecca spoke fondly of Mark, describing him as a loving and caring husband as well as a reliable provider for their children. At first glance, Mark seemed to embody trustworthiness, but he held secrets yet to be unraveled. Rebecca recalled an undercurrent of tension between her and Deanne Schultz, a close friend of Donna's. Deanne, deeply affected by the loss of her dear friend, struggled to come to terms with the new chapter in Mark's life. In an attempt to reconcile this strained connection, Mark explained to Rebecca the difficulties Deanne faced in accepting the tragic loss of Donna. Eventually, Mark Winger filed a lawsuit against the shuttle company that employed Roger Harrington. 
This legal battle would unearth previously undisclosed evidence, forever altering the perspective on the case of Donna Brown. The lawsuit prompted a fresh examination of the forensic evidence collected to reveal whether the company bore any responsibility for Donna's tragic murder. In 1999, four years after Donna's death, Deanne Schultz approached detectives with shocking allegations against Mark Winger. She admitted that she had engaged in an affair with Mark Winger during the time of Donna's tragic passing. She said that Mark made disturbing statements to her, including a chilling remark suggesting that Donna's death would be advantageous. Deanne also said that Mark had attempted to coerce her into assisting in Donna's murder. She recounted a conversation where Mark expressed the need to have someone in the house during the encounter with Roger Harrington. Firmly convinced of Mark Winger's guilt, Deanne believed that he was responsible for Donna's death. Upon closer examination of the forensic evidence, experts made a discovery that cast doubt on Mark Winger's account of the events. The Polaroid photographs taken at the crime scene were inconsistent. The position of Roger's lifeless body, lying on his back at an angle, contradicted Mark's description of the altercation. The placement of Roger's body made it implausible for him to have been actively attacking Donna when he was shot. There was also a notable absence of Donna's blood on Roger, considering the fact that she was bashed with a hammer. The analysis of blood splatter evidence linked to Donna's assault revealed that Roger could not have been the assailant. In stark contrast, the blood splatter patterns on Mark's clothing fit perfectly with the crime scene. As the investigation went further, more evidence came to light that reshaped the narrative completely. A crucial piece of evidence emerged in the form of a note discovered in Roger Harrington's vehicle. The note bore Mark Winger's name along with the time of 4.30 and the Winger family's address, resembling a reminder or appointment. Several weapons were also found within Roger's car. His belongings, such as his cigarettes and coffee cup, were deliberately placed on the kitchen table on the day of the murder. Shedding light on a potential premeditated scheme, dispatch records from the shuttle company revealed that Mark Winger had made a call earlier that day, specifically asking for Roger Harrington. With these pieces falling into place, the police began to suspect that Mark Winger had deliberately invited Roger Harrington to the house. As the case was revisited, a neighbor also came forward. According to her, she had heard the gunshots on the day of the murder, but what struck her was the significant time lapse between the two shots. The neighbor said at least five minutes had elapsed between the gunfires. While recounting the incident, Mark referred to the attacker as having a bullet in his head, singular, omitting any mention of the second gunshot. During the 911 call, Mark promptly ended the call saying that his baby was crying. That was not true at all. A sort of moaning could be heard in the background, Mark hung up the call to take care of Roger's unexpected survival before firing the fatal second shot. In 1999, the civil case against the transportation company was dismissed because of these new revelations. Now the focus shifted entirely onto Mark Winger as both the public and law enforcement began to harbor suspicions of his involvement in the murders. In exchange for her testimony against Mark Winger, Prosecutors granted Deanne immunity as no evidence linked her to the crime. Mark Winger was arrested on August 23, 2001. And finally, in May 2002, he stood trial for the murders of Donna Winger and Roger Harrington. Deanne Schultz took the stand and testified that Mark told her he wanted to end his marriage and confided in her about his plan to frame Roger Harrington. The forensic evidence compounded the suspicion, indicating that Mark had been in close proximity to Donna during the attack, strongly suggesting his involvement as the assailant. According to the prosecution's theory, Mark Winger orchestrated a plan to murder his wife, Donna, and settle the dispute that threatened Roger Harrington's job. Taking advantage of their encounter, Mark called Roger and invited him to the house under false pretenses. Upon Roger's arrival, Mark shot him in the head. The sound of gunfire drew Donna into the room where Mark brutally attacked her with a hammer. Mark then placed a 911 call but realized during the conversation that Roger was still alive. He hung up, fired another fatal shot at Roger, and awaited the arrival of the authorities. Throughout the trial, Mark Winger maintained his innocence and stuck to his original story of Roger attacking Donna. On June 5, 2002, Mark Winger was found guilty of the murders of Roger Harrington and Donna Winger. On August 9, 
he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The verdict brought a sense of relief to Roger's family, as their son was posthumously cleared of false accusations. While Donna's family found solace and justice, they were devastated by the fact that Mark Winger had deceived them all. Rebecca, now raising all four children on her own, decided to change her last name to Simic after divorcing Mark Winger. Despite the emotional turmoil caused by Mark, the children have thrived and achieved success in their lives. Although they maintain a relationship with Donna's family, they cut all ties with their father. But Mark Winger found himself facing new criminal charges in 2006. This time, he had attempted to arrange a murder-for-hire plot from prison, targeting Deanne Schultz, along with his childhood friend who had refused to pay his $1 million bail. In June 2007, Mark was convicted on these charges and an additional 35 years for solicitation of murder were added to his already existing life sentence. It was clear that Mark Winger would spend the rest of his days behind bars, unable to escape the consequences of his heart-wrenching actions. As the case of Donna Winger reaches its conclusion, one can't help but ponder the depths of deception and the devastating impact it had on the lives of those involved. The surviving family members, haunted by the memories of their lost loved ones, continue to grapple with the aftermath of this chilling tale. How did Mark Winger manage to maintain his facade for so long? Will the families ever find closure and peace after enduring such unimaginable trauma? Let us know your thoughts down below.